Good morning, Mr. Kenny. Good morning. We've met over Zoom, but we've never officially met in person until this morning. Is that correct, sir? It is. Okay. Mr. Kenny, I want to walk you through, uh, to start with, the 1883 set, and I think initially, Thel Reed had brought live rounds in a green ammo can. Is that correct? That's correct. They were, and specifically, they were reloads. Yes. And these were reloads, and some percentage of them were Starline brass reloads. Is that correct? Yes, I think it. I would just guess a good percentage, roughly fifty percent of the cases were Starline. Now, I think you described previously that there were three uh, types of bullet characteristics within those uh, reloads. Is that correct, sir? That is. And we tell the jury what type, what three types of reloads there were. So again, if we if we consider that a round of ammunition has four components, and, and commonly people say bullets, and what they were referring to is a is a, a total cartridge, right? But the bullet is actually the projectile, that single component, which essentially is flying towards whatever target. And Thale had had brought um, 45 Colt reloads um, that had that were made up roughly of of uh, almost equal thirds, you know, and it was a third what what are called semi wad cutters. The tip of those of those uh, of that projectile sh is shaped exactly like a crayon. It has the exact shape of a of a newly un used crayon. Um, then there was uh, another bullet profile, a truncated cone, mm -hmm. which kind of has a, a spaceship look to it. Uh, and then there was the common, more common and typical found uh, heavy grain bullet, which is, I, th I think, probably what most people would assume is a bullet when, when they do that. And it just looks like a lump of clay. Uh, uh, and it can be, there are slight variations to those shapes, but it can look like a human head essentially that was circular on uh, all the way around the sphere. Okay, kind of uh, like a rounded kind of. Yeah, and they, uh, uh, and even with a flat point on them, but they, but they seem to be those round nosed flat point uh, Versions all seem to be roughly the same. I, I didn't see any variations in those, but I, but honestly, I just don't recall. I just remember that there were three different type profiles, and the issue that we ran into was that we uh, they were shooting both lever action rifles and uh, revolvers at the at the shooting range, um, and specifically, I grouped the the each different bullet profile into separate boxes and told the guys that were manning uh, the, the prop master in a live fire armor that they had brought on uh, and, the, and they had an assistant as well that the, uh, that the semi wad cutters would not chamber in the lever action rifles. Um, mm -hmm. So best to use those in the revolvers. And ideally, the truncated cone and then the rounded bullets, those could be used in the lever actions. And ultimately, somebody put a, a semi watt cutter in one of the lever actions and jammed it up. Okay, well, in any event, there's three types of bullet characteristics in those reloads that Del Reed gets from Joe Swanson, correct? That, that from what I saw, yes. Okay, now you all have this live training uh, offset. It's at a cowboy training camp in Texas in 1883, correct? Correct. It was, it was nowhere anywhere near a set. It was on, again, Taylor, Taylor Sheridan had set up a, a, a private firing range, live fire area, and no filming was uh, done at that point. Okay, sir. So then after that set, you then retained the ammo can and the remainder of the live rounds that Dell had brought, correct? No. I, I retained the um, the Thale read yeah the the reloads from Thale but the ammo can was sent once once the the uh, the first I saw of, of the, what was the contents of the ammo can was actually at the firing range on Texas and at that point we needed to know how many we had and what variety because when I opened up the box it was a jumbled 
you know, distribution of three different types of bullet profiles. So what I did is, is previously I'd gotten from Joe Swanson uh, 10 uh, boxes that were flat, brand new. Uh, they actually had to be assembled. And I loaded the contents from the green ammo box that Thale had brought into those white boxes. Those white boxes went up to the firing line as well as the empty ammo can. And the ammo can was being used for the empty, the spent brass. Okay. So you did retain some of the reloaded live rounds after 1883 completed. After the 1883 Cowboy Training Camp, yes. And those then made their way back to Albuquerque, you've said, to PDQ Props, correct? Yes. And you don't know whether those returned, I think you've stated, before October 21st. You said you were hazy on the date, right? Yes. But we do know that you came back to Albuquerque from 1883 on or about October 11th. Uh, because you met with Sarah Zachary October 12th, correct? Correct. So when you came back, you brought dummy rounds from the set of 1883 to give to Sarah, correct? Correct. And those were 45 long Colt dummy rounds? Correct. Okay. Now, you had a whole group of dummies in 1883. Was How many do you think there were? 5,000. So out of those 5,000, you brought some back from Miss Zachary. Um, and at some point, you can't tell the jury when, those live rounds came back to your place. I've never been able to identify the exact date. Well, you also said on direct, they were delivered back. Uh, let me get you the words you used. They were offloaded from your Sprinter van and got moved back to Albuquerque in the bathroom. Is that mm -hmm. right? That's correct. Now, when you said got moved, isn't that you who moved them back? Yes. Okay. So, in reality, you drove them back from 1883, and you can't remember that date at all. No. I, I ballpark it, but it's not... It's not accurate. I, I, can, I have an idea of, of within months or two, or even did, you know, I can't, I can't tell you because I made at least two trips back and forth um, from Texas to Albuquerque, California, back again. It's just, I've just not been able to, to narrow it down. Did you ever go back and uh, when you were sitting down with Hancock in one of these times and sit down with the calendar and try to look at your trip receipts, look at any kind of credit card, try to figure that out? Yes, uh, repeatedly. I've, I've probably tried the three to five times to see if I can come up with a picture of uh, either the space, in, you know, PDQ space in Albuquerque, something that would indicate when I had brought those back. Uh, I've just been able, unable to. Okay. Now, you said that you brought these back, stored them in the bathroom, and you indicated that that could be a concerning situation if live rounds are stored in the same place as dummies. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. And the reason why you, you said that on direct is that dummies are made to look identical in a lot of respects to live rounds. Yes. Okay. Now, you also had within your place uh, blanks, correct, sir? Correct. Okay. Why would you store live ammo at PDQ at, at all? Well, I've got, you know, self-defense ammunition. Um, you know, it's Albuquerque after all, and that's enough right there. Um, and, you know, I, I deal with weapons that should not be out on the streets. Um, and, I'm, and I'll do what I have to to prevent that from happening. Uh, unfortunately, that's an unfortunate reality. So there are there is self defense ammunition and, uh, and the remnants of the eighteen eighty three cowboy training camp was there and I again don't know the date that I brought them back. Okay. Now you um you keep self defense ammunition, it's because it's a dangerous town, I think that's what you're saying. And you also keep weapons we've seen in pictures that were out kinda out in the open. Looked like they were cases. You recall that? 
From the evidence photos? Yes. Well, you're seeing what I want anybody to see that would break in if, you know, because again, it's Albuquerque. If somebody were break in, what are they going to go after first? That's what it's set up as. You don't see in the evidence photos belt fed machine guns, any machine guns, or a lot of other things that were there that are no longer there. Okay, so you had belt fed machine guns too? Oh yeah. And machine guns at, at this shop as well? Yes. Okay. So you wanted to people to see the uh and let me just show you defendants exhibit L fourteen. Yes sir. Thank you. Defendants uh, L14, and if you could um, describe, is this a picture inside PDQ props? It is. Okay, sir, can you tell the jury uh, these items, what type of firearms those are? Well, they look to be long arms, obviously because of, of the length, but what's inside those gun socks is a mystery. It could be anything from replicas, non-functioning shotguns, um, could be anything. So these were there on October 21st, are you, you telling the jury you don't know what was inside those socks? Definitely not, I have hundreds of guns. Okay, are they, are these hundreds of guns inside PDQ props? Or yeah, as well as, as replica and rubber as well, and then and replicas are, they look exactly like a gun, uh, but they are not. Um, and if I, that's not, is, how do we know that's October 21st, first of all? That shouldn't be. Not not, October 21st, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm getting my date. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Okay. This was the month after in November. This is the search warrant for us. Yes, yeah. I apologize. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So that was in November. Um, and Mr. Kenny, what is this on the, are these some rounds on the ground here? Everything in this room are going to be blanks or dummy rounds. Okay, but I'm, and I see them kind of laying in bags on the, the ground, is that correct? Yes. So, did you have any kind of, oh, first of all, let me, before I ask you that, you have a, a lot of boxes stacked up on the, um, the shelves here, do you see that? Yes, and that, that shelf holds um, entirely um, blanks. Okay. Did, did you have any sort of written inventory system for all your boxes? And Occasionally I would go through and, and make a list of what I had. It was, it was casual. You know, what do I need? You know, Swanson, Joe Swanson would say, Hey, I'm, I'm running off a, a batch of two, two, three blanks and, uh, or nine MM, uh, whatever it was. And, and if I was on the road, it would be helpful to kind of have an idea about that. But there was, there's no spreadsheet of, of inventory that I kept. Okay, and when you say casual, was it was this kind of was it written on a piece of paper? Or? It was. It was eight and a half by eleven. I would end up, uh, you know, with two or three eight and a half by elevens because it's not only we're not just talking about you know nine millimeter, right? We're talking about nine millimeter that is going to be what we use in the industry, anything from a, a solid plug load. And in a solid plug load, you can have 10, 10 variations. And then we have eighth flash, quarter flash, half flash, full flash. So um, you had to know what your inventory is by memory for the most part. And occasionally, you know, if, if, if inventory got too high in one area, I'd say, well, definitely don't, you know, if Joe says, hey, do you need any of this? respond no because it, it just doesn't make sense from a small business standpoint and and you said um, inventory uh, through memory um, I'm going to show you defendants L16 it's just one example were, were you able to remember at any given time each number of each of those types of boxes well when I'm 
if I'm handling it on a daily basis, yes. Deficiencies mostly. Well, and for example, when you have to invoice, um, like the rest said, uh, do you have any procedure that kind of tells you how you're going to invoice that? Typically what I'll do is, is very quickly, uh, usually movie productions, television productions are last minute. And oftentimes the invoicing become, you know, comes a week or two after the service has been provided. Uh, and so oftentimes I'll quickly jot down what it is that's being sent, take a picture of it, and oftentimes things go, you know, if they're shipped, everything goes overnight. So it's it's a last minute kind of business. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? I'll show this. Sir, I'm gonna approach and show you defendants E, E, and F, F. And I'll ask you if you recognize these two documents. I do. Can you no, no, that's okay. Yep. And what are those documents? This is an invoice uh, made out to Russ Production uh, with Sarah Zachary here as well. And which, can you look in the back of the one you just looked at and see what the sticker number is uh, on the back of the page? Just flip it over. The yeah, that little sticker, FF, does that say that? This is FF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you just read for the record from FF, and what is EE? -E? The other exhibit? Well, you haven't introduced you. No, I was just going to ask to move them in, Your Honor. Just have them identify EE. -E. Okay. So FF is an invoice for uh, blink ammunition as well as dummy rounds. Okay, and is that your invoice, sir? Yes, it is. And is it the same for EE? -E? If you could take a look at that. And this EE -E is an invoice for guns, replicas, uh, rubber guns, gun bags, and socks. Okay, and, don't, and not get into the kind of so You just recognize that, do you not? I do. Okay. Yeah. I would move for the admission of those two exhibits. No objection. EE -E and FF are admitted. You may publish. Thank you, Your Honor. Defendants. So, Mr. Kenny, I'm first going to show you defendants EE. -E, and you were just telling the jury, uh, just uh, can you just summarize this and don't go into every item? Sure, this is the um, gun, replica, and rubber invoice to the Rust production from PDQ. Mr. Bowles, hold the Okay, uh, Mr. Kenny, if you can just summarize that uh, for the jury. So that invoice is from PDQ to the rest production for firearms, replica firearms, as well as rubber firearms. Okay, and now I want to show you and this is what you, and the one we just saw, this is what you uh, supplied to Rust, correct? Correct. Okay. Now I want to show you defendants FF. 
And if you can summarize this document. It's a um, invoice from PDQ to Rust Production for blanks, blank ammunition, as well as dummy rounds. Okay, and then if I want to show you the second page of that. And what does that say on the second page? It says dummy rounds, 4440 slash 45 LC long colt and 12 gauge. So is this uh, the line where you um, you invoiced for those 45 long colt rounds? It is. Okay. And so you, you put this together in a group with the other types, correct? Yes. And the, the number... The numbers on the left column, so you, you start at your dummy rounds, 44, 40, 45, then there's a number, 200. Is that the quantity? That is the quantity. And then there, the price per item is right next to that, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Now the, so these, um, these dummy 45 and other dummies, did you rent these to Rust? I did. What was listed there is not inclusive of actually what was provided to set. Um, there were some, as I recall, there were some 44 Henry dummy rounds, um, possibly some 4570. I don't recall exactly. Uh, so w were there other invoices? No. Okay. So there were certain items that you did not invoice for. That's correct. Okay. And that, did that also include um, what's called primed cases? No, primed cases would, cases would not be uh, on, in, a, in the dummy round line of the invoice. That would be that would be listed out separately, because one is one is a consumable, uh, the other one is a rental, and prime cases would be a consumable. And I want to talk a little bit about that, but you provided. Sarah Zachary, some primed cases for Rust, correct? Not that I recall. I mean, I'd have to look at the invoice. Okay. What is a primed case? A primed case is 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 simply that it it's um, it's a ammunition case that has a primer uh, without gunpowder. Um, Typically, the Joe Swanson crimps the end uh, because what happens is that they're too long. If he doesn't crimp the end, they're too longer to actually be functional in a revolver. Um, and they're they're simply, you know, like a loud cap gun when they go off. Uh, they're good for training. Uh, they're good for uh, around horses and kids. Uh, and Certain armorers will rig them up in theater as well. Live theater will use them with talcum powder um, for an effect with minimal noise and for also for close proximity. Do you recall telling um, Detective Hancock when you interviewed with her that you had given a number of prime cases to Sarah and it will be interesting to see what color primers they have? No, I don't recall that. If I showed you your interview transcript with that, it, it would help. Yeah. Okay. It's page Did you indeed tell Detective Hancock that you had given a number of primed cases to Sarah? Well, it's interesting because it, it says prime cases, and that I would have said primed. Um, I, I never say prime cases. I just 
sounds like you're ordering some off of Amazon. Uh, so I don't recall that conversation. I'm not. I'm not. I don't even know what I'm referring to in that uh, in that conversation. Well, do you recall that there was discussion about? Um, those being there and that you looked for a picture to show Hancock? No, I don't remember. Okay. Do you recall stating that chances are they'll all have the same color primer? I, this conversation, I just don't remember the particulars of this conversation with, with Detective Hancock. But do you recall at all, regardless of the conversation, that Sarah Zachary had primed cases on the set of Rust? If they're on the invoice and it's and it's a, a a dummy or excuse me, it's a blank round, and I would include a primed case in a in a blank round invoice, because um, again, it's it's a consumable. Um, I would not be surprised if if they got prime case uh, blanks. Let's call them. Well, sir, don't you know that? Don't you know you provided that to, to Sarah Zachary? No, it was two over what two and a half years ago. But this was a, I mean, traumatic event for everybody. You talked to you 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 remember that, don't you? I remember it being traumatic. Yes, no, you absolutely. Remember, you remember providing those cases because you discuss it for five pages in this. No, I don't remember. Do you recall during this conversation as well that you called a man named Troy Teske? I've called Troy Teske a number of times in the last six years. I'm, I'm asking you specifically, during the interview with Detective Hancock, November 1st, do you recall that you, tried, in, you called Troy Teske? In the interview room, yes, with, yeah. with Detective, at the, yeah, the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office, yes. Yes, because he was at lunch. You called him. You were trying to reach him. I, yes, now I, now I understand what you're talking about. Okay. And do you recall also calling Joe Swanson while you were sitting down with, with the detective? I do. And do you recall when you asked Joe Swanson whether he had put these in boxes, uh, how many rounds he had made in total? He said about 700 uh, is what you said. Do you recall saying that he had made about 700 rounds? I have a vague recollection of, of the conversation with, okay. with Detective Hancock, yeah. And as you're talking to Joe Swanson and you ask him if they were in the box or the green ammo can, do you recall he's on the phone with you and you're asking if they were in the green ammo can and you say... Okay, uh, Mr. Kenny, do you recall you said, as you're on the phone, shit, shit, shit. I'm like, oh, God, well, I mean, still trying, damn. you recall saying that? Vaguely, yes. You also recall saying, uh, you said it twice, you said, shit, 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 well, she still didn't do her effing job. Do you recall saying that? That sounds like me. So, when you find out, and I don't want to get into what Mr. Swanson told you, but when you find out whatever you find out on the phone, you say shit, shit, shit twice. Mm. Why did you say that? I think I was worried that it was going to be some of these rounds that that Thale had given to Troy Teske and had been using, um, you know, to shoot. Right, shooting live rounds that somehow they migrated in in some of Thales leather or um, you know through Hannah in some way, and that again we were going to be here saying 
Joe Swanton live live ammunition when he's primarily 99.9% .9 of the time he just provides movies and television shows with blanks and dummy rounds and that's an uncomfortable situation for Joe Swanson. So you just gave a long explanation and you just um, kind of blamed, tried to blame Hannah in that, didn't you just now? How did I do that? I don't well, you, you gave the implication that you were worried that this was going to be some that Bill had and Troy was shooting. And, and again, that, that's to try to link it to Hannah, isn't it? No. No, okay. just, just telling you my thought process at that point, trying to figure out where did this, where did the rust live ammunition come from? And was it going to, you know, point back to Joe Swanson? Okay. And do you recall on July 11, 2023, you interviewed with myself and Miss Morrissey? Uh, you call that, sir? Yeah, the, the Zoom meeting. Yes, I recall that. And do you recall when I asked you the same question, shit, 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 why did you say shit, shit, shit? You said, I don't know. And that was the extent of your answer. You recall that? Yes. So back in July 11, 2023, your memory, would you agree with me, would be fresher to that time frame when you said it than it would be now? Well, not if, if I had reviewed things or, or something else jogged my memory of that event or, you know, because it was a highly, it was a, an emotional time. And that, the, you know, I've found that largely when things are emotionally charged, um, there, there kind of needs to be uh, some kind of gateway between the present and recollecting how I felt and, and the way things were at that point in time. And, and I understand, but you, would you agree with me you gave a different answer on July 11th, I don't know, than you do today? I don't know if I don't know is really an answer other than at that moment in time after us discussing it, I hadn't thought about saying shit four times in an interview with a detective. The rounds, again, that went to 1883 came back at some point to your place. Again, some of those reloaded rounds from Joe Swanson were Starline Brass. So the, the 1883 Cowboy Camp training camp, just to be specific. Yes, some of those Thale Reed, Joe Swanson reloads came back to PDQ in Albuquerque. And as well, uh, some of your dummy rounds also were Starline Brass, correct? Correct. And they had nickel primers? Correct. Okay. And the live rounds found on set that were Starline Brass also had nickel primers, correct? On the set of Rust? Yes, sir. From the evidence photos, yes, those were nickel primers. As well? Yes. Okay. And in addition to providing replica firearms, did you provide rubber firearms to the set? To the set of rust, yes. Okay. Did you provide uh, over 3,000 rounds of ammo? I don't know what the total of, if we're referring to bl uh, blanks. Bl too. Yeah, yeah, blanks, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the total is of blanks to rust. I've never totaled it out. Uh, well, other than the invoice, that would have been the only time. Okay. When you would get a request from Sarah Zachary uh, for additional rounds that were needed, would she come pick those up from you at your place? I think once, uh, once the initial supply of blanks and uh, and firearms were provided to to Sarah there was only one other occasion that I can recall Sarah coming and getting anything for rust from me which was on October 12th okay and do you recall Sarah and Hannah coming before rust started to your place I do and at that time didn't you give Hannah her leathers as well as Firearms and ammunition. I, yeah, I vaguely recall that, uh, yeah, that she got that then. Because, in fact, Hannah had mailed you uh, the letters back from the old way at the end of that set. You recall that? Yeah, she had shipped uh, everything from Montana to uh, me, in, uh, me in Texas. 
And so when you received those in Texas and the leathers and everything else, you brought them back to PDQ Props? That's correct. They uh, were, the leathers were in the same box. They never got pulled out. Um, the replica firearms did get pulled out, but the rest of the leathers remained in the box. Okay, sir, then you gave that to uh, Sarah and Hannah for their use on the rest set. Is that fair to say? Well, whatever she was going to do with it was up to Hannah um, and Thail. Okay. Um, but do you, you know they got used on the rest set? I don't know that. I, okay. I'm just, I can assume that's, that's where that leather went to. Okay. Now I want to ask you uh, some questions about the dummy rounds that you answered earlier. Um, you did indicate that dummies that do not rattle can be dangerous. Is that right? Dummy rounds that do not rattle are not dummy rounds to me. Okay. And I think you've said because it, it is dangerous when an armor is trying to figure out maybe in a high-speed environment, maybe things are going on, you're trying to distinguish between a live round and a dummy, and it will not rattle. Uh, it doesn't rattle. Didn't you describe that as being a dangerous situation? Well, certainly, because you don't. You, it's like a firearm that you can't check is is unloaded. You have to assume that it's loaded or that the the round is live, and it's not a dummy round. Yes, sir. And you also stated that you would not source those type of rounds, like Denix rounds, that do not rattle, right? That's correct. And it's one of the things you said that you would not be in favor of having a mixture of dummies, some that rattle, some that don't. That's a dangerous situation, isn't it? Well, it's, it's you know, I work with, with prop crews a lot. They're not specialists, they're not armorers, but they are charged with the responsibility of having gun belts and dummy rounds on set. And if they get the idea that dummy rounds don't necessarily have to rattle, bad precedent, deadly precedent. It sets a deadly precedent, and on this set on Rust, you're aware that there were those types of a mixture of different types of dummy rounds, are you not? Well, I, I'm not a, I wasn't aware of that. that because well, you weren't before, but you are now having reviewed the pictures. Yeah, the Den X round is a costume round that doesn't rattle. Okay. So after you reviewed the pictures from set, you're now aware that there was a dangerous mix of types of dummies, some that rattle, some that didn't. Well, a Denix round is not dangerous. It sets a, a dangerous precedent. Okay. You know? And I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying you can fire it. I'm just saying, in your words, it can set a dangerous precedent. Yeah, is it's, right? yes. It's not an ideal situation. Not, okay. not at all. Okay, sir, I want to talk about your, your interactions with Detective Hancock in this case. When the case started, do you recall you had a, um, meeting or call with her maybe the same day as the shooting incident? No, I don't. I don't. With Detective Hancock? Yes. On, the, on October 21st? Mm -hmm. Don't recall it at all. I don't think it happened. Okay. Do you recall that on the course of time after that shooting incident, you called Detective Hancock over 40 times? Yeah, it sounds about right. Do you think it might have been higher than that? Oh, definitely. Okay. Um, and during that time, you're sharing information with her, she's sharing information with you, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And doesn't she share you materials from the investigation at times? The first time that I think she showed me anything was when they were executing the search warrant on the prop truck. She was showing me, I think they were black and white, grainy photos. Okay. That was the first time I saw anything. Now. Do you recall providing uh, Detective Hancock some of the live rounds before the execution of the search warrant? I did. Okay. So you provided her some, and was that in a bag, or how did you give those to her? Well, interestingly enough, they came from that jammed lever-action rifle, and they happened to be uh, the semi-wad cutter live rounds. Uh, they were in a small Benelli shotgun choke bag, and I had written on there in, in black ink live and there were between five and seven, I believe, that I gave her. Okay, and you, you volunteered those to her, and, and she took them, then they came to search after that, is that right? That's correct. Okay. And again, there was a month time frame or so, roughly, between the shooting incident and that search of your place. Yeah, I believe it was over a month, because it, it was after Thanksgiving, so yeah, over a month. 
Did, did you have any inkling or thought that they were going to come search? No, not at all. Even though you had been in contact with the detective and other people before that, you knew they were investigating? I knew they were investigating. I had no reason to believe that they would be executing a search warrant on my business. Now, did you provide your DNA to Detective Hancock? No, I did offer it, though. You offered it? Yes. And they did not take you up on that? That's correct. Um, and they did not take your fingerprints either, did they? Well, my fingerprints are in the system already. Um, through the, If you're a federal firearms licensee, that's just part of the licensing, is that your, your fingerprints go into the, the digital federal system. And, and I understand that, sir, but my question was, did, you, did they take your fingerprints? Again? No. Okay. Well, they didn't take it the first time. That was somebody else. That's true. Okay. Um, now, I want to ask you uh, a different topic. After this, you were asked on, on direct if after this October 16th accidental discharge, you had had an argument with uh, Ms. Gutierrez Reed. Do you recall that? It, by text message, yes. Okay. And you recall after that that you wanted to fire Ms. Gutierrez Reed? It wasn't that I wanted her fired uh, because it wouldn't be for me to fire her. Um, she can tell me to go to hell all day long, and it, it wouldn't make a difference to the rust production. Um, it doesn't, you know, I've got five sisters and two daughters. I'm used to it. Um, so if the rust production is happy and they were, you know, they, Sarah Zachary said she's a great armor. Uh, that I've seen the, she, the defendant, Hannah, she sent me the text message that the director had sent her after a big shootout on blank ammo shootout, big, big and, shootout. And Mr. Kinney, I, 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 that my question was pretty simple. And okay. Let me ask it again. Okay. Um, you, you just testified that you did not want to get rid that you did not want to fire Hannah. Is that your testimony? It's, it's not that I wanted her fired. She was doing a horrible job at props. That was an issue. Um, okay, you answered my question, and I, I just want to know. It's a, it's a real... It, I, I had mixed feelings about it, and okay. I think that's why, you know, in fact, I reached out to two common friends with Thale saying this is the situation, you know. Okay, well, did, do you recall in your interview on November 1st stating she was just being an idiot? I wanted, I wanted Sarah to get rid of her. Collectively, yes. I mean, you know, even now, frustrated with her, but at the same time, you know, understand, well, you know, what she's up against. So it's a mixed bag of emotions, and, and, and ultimately was Sir, not my, my call. my question was, 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 did you remember stating that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that, that's what I asked. Now, Uh, do you also recall in the July 11th interview stating, well, I wasn't going to work with her again in the future? So you wanted her fired. I just, again, it, it, it was, there were some mixed emotions and, uh, in the situation. If I, wanted her, if I really wanted her fired, I could have gotten her fired. Let me ask you that. If you um, you could have gotten her fired, you could have talked to um, somebody on set. Who was your contact on set? It would have been, uh, well, Gabrielle Pickle was, uh, actually, Angel Nijem was my first contact with, a, with production at Rust, and then it was Gabrielle Pickle, um, line producer, unit production matter, manager, Roe Walters. Those would have been the ones to to fire her sarah was sarah zachary was she was willing to work with hannah and and get the movie finished and Council approach. yes
Mr. Kenny, do you have reloading equipment? I don't. What? I don't. Hey, do you recall on the interview on July 11, 2023, <clears throat> I asked you if you had any reloading equipment and you said, I do? Possibly in California, possibly. Okay, does that mean you do have reloading equipment? Well, PDQ doesn't doesn't have reloading equipment, and we don't reload. Okay, sir, but do you recall when I asked you, now, do you have any reloading equipment, your answer was, I do. Personally, in California, there may be. I haven't seen it in years. Okay, and, and you know how to um, to convert a dummy round from uh, into a live round, don't you? Hypothetically. Yeah, because hypothetically, don't you recall telling Detective Hancock that if the camera crew, and let me just get the wording so I don't misquote it. <clears throat> um, if the camera crew wanted to send a little going away present, um, and then you described the process. Do you recall that? No, I don't recall it. If you, if I showed this to you, would it, would it refresh your memory? Sure. Okay. How far do you want me to read down? Just uh, the highlighted portions. Okay. Mr. Bowles, is that the July 11 transcript? That is the November with uh, Detective Hancock. <laughs> It does. So now do you recall having a conversation with Detective Hancock about how one could turn a dummy into a live round? Yes, yes. And can you tell the jury, how would you do that? <clears throat> well, the easiest thing would be to have reloading equipment, press out the inert primer, um, in first, the, if we imagine a, a, a dummy round where the bullet is actually pressed into the case um, and you had an inert primer, you'd need a, a fairly complicated setup of, of reloading equipment. You'd, you'd need either a kinetic bullet puller uh, to remove the bullet from the case. If you used a set of pliers, it would mangle the bullet and prevent seating afterwards in a in a die if you had reloading equipment so you'd have to somehow remove the bullet from the case uh, we're assuming there's a BB or a number two lead shot rattle that would have to be removed you'd have to have um, a decapper to press out the um, the the inner primer um, and then you'd have to you could use the same bullet uh, assuming it wasn't mangled and you'd have to have a live primer and a charge of powder and then be able to have the appropriate dye and seed it to the appropriate depth as well as putting in again the fresh primer the primer pocket you know primer uh, primer installer 